one. Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode six of the HJC podcast. My name's Ryan, your Saturday writer, your blog admin, and today we got a lot on our plate. We're talking uh, two types of Adidas jerseys. We're talking our new New York Islanders redesign competition. We'll go around the league, and of course, we'll play fake or authentic. Joining me today, Monday's writer, Sean. Sean? Glad to be back. Always fun time. And for the first time joining us, Wednesday's writer, Phil. How's it going, Phil? It's going all right. How are you guys doing today? Excellent, excellent. Uh, also joining us, Friday's writer, TC. Uh, glad to be back. It's a pleasure, as always. And Sunday's writer, Steve. Hi, everybody. And friend of the show, Beepo. How's it going? Good. How are you? Very nice. Thank you for asking. Uh, we'll get to... Let's start off with the uh, Adidas military theme jerseys that we've been seeing pop up this week. And I thought what was kind of interesting is, yeah, it's a templated jersey and all the same, all the teams are using the same template. But each team was allowed to add their own personal flair, if you will. Uh, we saw Boston with the TV numbers. Uh, Buffalo used their own style numbers. Just your general thoughts on the uh, military Adidas jerseys, Sean. It's not one of the sort of disappointments. I think is when you go online to buy a jersey and you see you first you see the cross check jerseys and those look like shit, and then you see the military jerseys and you're just like, man, they look the same for all thirty now thirty one teams. So it's nice to see uh, you know Adidas take a step to allow these teams to do whatever they want. Now, if they'll allow the fans to do this, is another question. Yeah, Phil, what do you think uh, from what you've seen from the uh, military themed jerseys? Well, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who broke the uh, story on HJC about the Islanders uh, setting up the auctions for the uh, military jerseys. I think they did a pretty good job, especially with the new template that they have as opposed to the older style Reebok templates. Like, yeah, you get, still have the Adidas stripes and whatnot, but at the same time, it does allow the camouflage to stand out a little more just being on the sleeves, and it allows your logo to stand out a little more. So it does have more personality in regards to the hockey aspect of things, but at the same time, it still could use a little bit of improvement. Yeah, and I think you know, hopefully Adidas will do that. It's we got to say it's their first year. TC, what what did you think of the military theme jerseys that you've seen so far? Uh, of the ones I've seen so far, I'm a fan. I think it's an improvement on the military jerseys of the past. Uh, and I really do like the fact that they are allowing the teams to add a more personal touch onto it to keep it from being just another template uh, jersey. Because until I picked up on that, people were posting like, oh, this is Buffalo's. Oh, this is this team's. And I was like, it's the same goddamn uniform done with different logos. But once I saw that they were individualizing it for the team, I, I actually gained a lot more respect for the design. Steve, your thoughts? I actually like this design this year, and I think they really did do a lot better of a job than what Reebok did in the past. I do like that they did give some bit of individuality to it with the teams, rather than just saying, okay, everyone gets this jersey with these numbers, you get a black and white logo, and so forth. So, kudos to them. And Brendan? Now, honestly, I kind of had the same reaction as, as as TC until technically just now because I looked or whenever anybody would talk about these, it's like, okay, it's the same jersey with a different logo. I didn't notice that any teams were individualizing it at all, and I didn't even know that until you just mentioned it moments ago. But <laughs> just on a Google image search here, it doesn't look like that's a new thing this year. I see Carolina, one from a Reebok, one with their own font, a Washington Capitals one, actually. No, no, that's, uh, that's another year that has... You, like the USA flag in the numbers. Maybe Boston the, with the some, customization uh, this year has gone a little extra. Like I, I'll go back to Boston's again, where they did a, a badge for the TV numbers. I believe it was. Uh, I don't. Now remember. it's looking like they did that in previous years as well. Although actually, oh. okay, so I, good on the Bruins I, then. Honestly, I'm not entirely positive if this is Adidas or not. It's hard to see the collars, and even the Reebok collars kind of look like they aren't 
the normal Reebok collars on this Capitals one. Well, hopefully Adidas has let the teams decide to do something unique if they want to, and it continues because I, I'm probably not going to be one of the people to buy these jerseys, but uh, I may be swayed if they continue to customize them and not everyone looks exactly the same. And I haven't seen any Canadian teams, but I believe they have right. Canadian military print on their jerseys, and all the American teams have U.S. military print on their jerseys. Let's move Isn't on. Isn't that illegal in Canada? Illegal? How so? I thought um, you only Canadian military were allowed to have the military pattern. I'm not. I'm actually not familiar with any of those rules. I believe it's that it can't be the exact pattern. Like they can't take the exact same camouflage pattern that the Canadian military use. They use a variant version of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Personally, I thought they should have just taken the ice wearing Mounties had jerky jerseys, jackets, <laughs> things, <laughs> Mounties uniforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's totally. It's a little not. cheesy though. No, just a little uh, stereotypical. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's like me saying all the American teams should have taken the ice and wife beaters and guns, but we're not going there today. So, okay, okay, that's just New York and New Jersey. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's maybe just California. <laughs> to be fair, that also applies to Georgia. Yeah, sure. true. <laughs> all right. What if there's no team? <laughs> maybe it's soon. a good time to move on to the Adidas just lavender. Soon. Uh, hockey fights cancer jerseys and these ones were templated all the same and no one added their own uh special designs to them except for their own individual logos and possibly their font too but uh just your guys thoughts on what we saw this year from the hockey fights cancer jersey sean a great cause very 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 bad jerseys um you can't really fault them i mean like again it's hockey fights cancer it's a nice idea you know this is coming once a year you know what it's gonna look like and it doesn't look great i don't know if there's a way you could make half of those jerseys look good i think the only interesting thing is that ottawa rolled out with the um the o logo instead of the senators logo i think that that's the one positive thing we saw with this so one team improved on it but i wouldn't rush out to buy one and it'll continue all month. All, November is Hockey Fights Cancer Month. I know the Canucks previously have worn the Johnny Canuck logo, the full body Johnny Canuck logo. So maybe they'll continue to do that again. I actually like the jerseys. Uh, I I'm, love classic jerseys. So this is a simple design, square shoulder yokes. Uh, unfortunately, the s- design on the sleeve gets cut off, but can't complain. Um, it could be a lot worse. Uh, Brendan, what did you think of the lavender jerseys? Well, if you compare them to last year, I'd say they're a little bit better with the white yokes and the uh, sort of stripes. But, um, I mean, in the end, it's a jersey worn during warm-ups once a year for a good cause. I don't think the design is that big of a deal, especially when you compare it to a team's home and away set. But if we are going for an actual nice design, then I think that if they wanted to use the current template, finish the arm stripes and add a hem stripe. Or, even better, to uh, make it unique to each team, take each team's jersey style and put it in uh, lavender and white. Or lavender and some other color. Or lavender and white and some other color. Whatever See, you want to do. If they did that, that's just where I wouldn't be lavender. on the board. I actually enjoy that it's a unique jersey. If they just made each team's jersey lavender and white, I, I wouldn't be a fan of that. Phil, what are your thoughts on these jerseys? Uh, a couple things. One, first of all, I have... I actually own one of the older Reebok uh, Hockey Fights Cancer jerseys. And let me say this. The lavender works so much better with white than it does with that gray of the Reebok practice jerseys. It works so much better. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's cleaner in terms of how everything's cut in terms of the pattern. And it's a lot classier in my opinion. Um, Again, still with the Adidas stripes. It's just beating a dead horse here at this point. Um, But... Overall, I'd say it's an improvement. The one thing, touching on what Beepo was saying about how you would adjust the, the uh, colors for a potential jersey, I actually saw Islanders hats, similar to the ones that they have right here where they have the striping on the sides, but the orange striping was replaced with lavender, and they had the Hockey Fights Cancer logo on it. So I don't think it would be that bad. And Steve? Steve? Do we lose Steve? Yeah, no, his Steve. Oh, there we go. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Steve's back. My, my mouse is 
being buggy right Stupid. now. So, but Steve yeah, mentally checked simple. out. But anyways, um, <laughs> no, it's they're simple jerseys, but they're effective. And um, I don't know if anyone noticed, but some of the teams like the Penguins have, they're not just plain white, but they have a yellow outline on the numbers. So they're using it like regular team numbers. So there's where that basically little individuality comes in. But overall, you know, I I don't think given the new template and everything, I don't think they did too bad with it. TC? You know, I know it's for a noble cause. And compared to the Hockey Fights Cancers jerseys of the past, I agree with Bill. It works a lot better than the gray, but... I don't know about trying to shoehorn this lavender lilac into a jersey. I think they could probably find a better way to incorporate it, like the way the NFL uses pink uh, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month on all the equipment. And I I just don't like the idea of bringing in a color that's in literally no team's color palette and making them all wear that jersey. I'm sure our friend FC Macbeth loves it, but I'm just not a fan. Well, here we go. Yeah, Do you cool. know why the NHL uses the lavender? Probably no. because it's distinct from every other league. I don't know. Because the pink is designated for breast cancer and people complained about it. So they used to have pink, but then they changed it to lavender because I guess lavender is universal for cancer. Mm, yes. Okay. The more you Leona. Know, I'm actually on Google right now, and I see a Penguins version of that hat that uh, Sean, I believe it was, was talking about. No, I think it was. And, I think I said that. Uh, well, okay, whoever it was who said that. Um, it was Phil. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not I really what I meant Phil. by the. <laughs> yeah, check with Phil. I think he said okay. that. Okay, so uh, what uh, what Ryan was saying about the hat. Uh, so. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> Well That's not really what I meant. Whenever I mentioned, whenever I mentioned, uh, you know, making a team jersey pattern in lavender, I'm not sure if that, but you guys got it. Almost sounded like it by the way some of you were talking about it. I think, but I mainly meant just take a team pattern and make it lavender and white, mainly pri- primarily lavender. No, 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 no. You get a black jersey and you add lavender and white to it with the team striving pattern. It has. Don't you start with your. Black Jersey Brigade over there. And then you sell them on shop.nhl.com as black cancer jerseys. No? Is that no good? That's terrible. You don't want to sell them as black cancer jerseys? No? Okay. Okay, we won't do that. Period. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) All right. Uh, So as I said uh, at the start of the show, we now have our New York Islanders redesign competition that's just started. And I thought, uh, seeing as we have a hardcore Islanders fan on the podcast this week, and we're all <laughs> we're all gathered, here, and we have a hardcore Islanders hater on the podcast. Um, <laughs> TC's a, a Rangers fan, so uh, let's talk about first some things uh, that we may not want to see uh, in the concepts or in some of the entries for this competition. I'll start us off taking uh, a jersey that the Islanders have already worn and making it orange. Uh, it's just boring, and I don't think it gives you any chance of winning or it, it doesn't really show too much creativity. So that's uh, something that I'd like to see people steer clear of. How about you, Phil? Yeah, I mean, that's just laziness, honestly. Because, yeah, I would agree that the current Islanders setup would look pretty cool with orange and probably the white swapped from the white jersey that you're wearing right now, by the way, Ryan. I just had to put it on for this podcast. Yeah, and I'm not even wearing an Islander jersey, so that's how weird it is. It looks like um, it does. It looks like you're wearing a turd burger, but I, th- there's no. No, NHL. I'm not actually. I'm wearing a game in Pittsburgh Phils jersey from the Stably Cap tournament. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. Shameless plug. <laughs> I played in that tournament. I have a right to wear my jersey. Um, Shameless self promotion. Um, for for everyone listening, the, the great the great inside joke on all of our podcasts for the last year or two years is that you guys can't see us, but we always make sure to wear jerseys as if you guys could see us, and we're very proud of the jerseys that we wear. And it becomes yeah. a competition. I believe last year during the summer we had a great podcast where we actually had wardrobe changes during the podcast. Just right. Yes, I remember that. Fantastic That's, work on all want, on all of our parts here. You want to bring that back now, Brandon? <laughs> if you feel like going to change, long. you no. go ahead, man. 
Well, technically, I've kind of changed jerseys, but I think it was all before the podcast officially started. <laughs> True. <laughs> anyway, back to the Islanders real quick. Um, I just want to see improvements in the Islanders look. Like, obviously, right now, it's a very clean look. Um, Sean, don't you dare mouth black right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want to do black and work the Brooklyn jersey, that's fine. Do something with that. Do not make sure your jersey's better than the Islanders alternate from 2013, 2012, uh, 2013, I believe it was. Not possible. Make a black and teal Islanders jersey. Okay, everybody <laughs> listening, black and teal. No, funny thing, I've actually seen black starter fisherman jerseys on eBay. Just... I'm serious. I'm dead serious. They were like, like in the 95, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Starter. Nine... 95 yeah, was you know huge what I'm talking about. For... Starter came out with like the, these fashion jerseys. Oh, yeah. They were like crazy. Black Fisherman. Them. There was a yellow Panthers jersey, a yep. yellow Blackhawks jersey, I believe. Blue Avalanche jersey, blue Flyers jersey. And it was ridiculous. But, yeah, blue and teal. Go for it. Sure. Why not? <laughs> TC, as, a, as an Islanders hater, uh, <laughs> may, <laughs> maybe some things that you do not want to see in this competition. Um. I do not want to see repeats of any design that they've worn in the past. Uh, That's one of my personal pet peeves is when people put old designs on new templates and go, hey, here, look what what I've done. Yeah. Um, As much as I hate to admit it, uh, after I lost that bet with Phil, I had to review it. And I do love the Islanders color scheme with the city it ties in with their colors and it's really hard to make blue white and orange look bad uh so i think preserving that color scheme would be a good way to go and it's just a question of finding a way to make it look new and fresh oh and i know we're going to get this a lot but i don't want every second entry to have four stripes because that gets old that gets old pretty quickly very old. Steve or Brendan, maybe you guys want to comment on what you guys would like to see from this competition. Some some cool things that you could would get your vote. Um, I would say if you could modernize the fisherman logo, I'd totally give you props for it. Yeah, it if could you work. Could, if you could incorporate that, I just don't want to see you slap on the. Uh, fisherman striping or wave pattern, whatever you want to call it, right onto a modern Adidas uh, template yeah. because I'm probably going to yell at my computer and try and hunt you down and yell at you for it. But um, no, try <laughs> and modernize the Islanders uh, fisherman logo. Make yeah. it look good. Try and put it on a jersey made with the current colors. Brendan? It's a good thing you asked that because pretty much the only thing I had in my mind for the other question was things that you should do. But everybody's mentioned, you know, don't just rehash an Islander's old jersey or anything similar to it. But I, I'm always down for creativity and concepts because I think the only time that a, a copy of a, a previous jersey really works is a this is my ideal NHL type of series. And, but if you're going to make a concept, go all out. For bring in black if you want to. It's just a concept. You're not designing their actual jerseys. Sean's shaking his head right now. I wouldn't. I would recommend uh, don't make it their primary color. But <laughs> if you want to try and make black look good, go ahead. If you want to make teal look good, go ahead. If you want to make a jersey that's black and teal, make it look good. Go ahead. It's just a concept. Great. As point. much as I don't think that would be a good route to go in real life, if you it, if you make it as a concept and it looks good, maybe you'll get some votes for being unique. And unique is is what gets votes. Uh, we saw it with the LA comp, um, but uh, yeah, being unique is what gets votes. Let's. Uh, yep. move. Sorry, go ahead. I said yep. Oh, that's <laughs> very very <laughs> wise of you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> and top, top analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pierre. Let's go back up to the booth. Moving on. Top flight analysis. All right, let's move to a, a new segment that we're going to try out today. It's called Throwback Throwdown. So we're going to take two throwback jerseys. We're going to uh, review them each, uh, debate our points, and uh, we'll pick uh, the best jersey of the two. And today, 
uh, theme of the show seems to be the New York Islanders. So we have the New York Islanders fisherman jerseys going up against the early 2000s orange alternate. Phil, why don't you start us off? Review the fisherman jerseys for us and your thoughts on them. Okay, so the fisherman jerseys, I always argue that the biggest reason that people hated that logo, despite the fact that it was like all cheesy 90s stuff, was that it deviated from a logo that symbolized winning Stanley Cups back in the 80s. And with the nonsense that the franchise was experiencing after 94, um, you can understand why fans were upset. With Sorry, that. Uh, who won the cup in '94? There, yeah, I was I was gonna say the Islanders made the playoffs in '94 and unfortunately got swept. Um, <laughs> but but you didn't answer my question. Well, I, I I essentially did because you know who swept them, right? Uh, uh would would that be? I don't know. You yeah. I'm all seriousness. You actually cut out there at the perfect <laughs> time. <laughs> would that be she the Rangers? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's the question. Who won in 2014? Um, but anyway, it was not the Islanders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, and then obviously the wave striping was very obnoxious and stuff. But at the same time, it's all it's going to always hold a special place in my heart for it because I'm a kid of the 90s. So growing up with that jersey. <laughs> here you go, Steve. Uh, growing up with that jersey, it's, it'll always hold a place in my heart. That being said... <laughs> Backed up against all the jerseys that ever existed, that's got to be one of the bottom ten. Bottom ten, wow. All right, uh, anyone else want to chime in on the fisherman jerseys? Sean, you got to have some thoughts on the fisherman jerseys. I mean, bottom ten, I think, is really harsh. Like, I I don't hate this jersey as much as I'm told to hate it, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I was born the year that they did the switch over from the fisherman logo to the regular logo. So, I mean... I don't have the nostalgia for it. My nostalgia is people looking back going, wasn't that terrible? I don't think it was that terrible. I think that, you know, adding teal to the Islanders looked fine. The gray didn't look so bad. And as an alternate, it probably would have worked quite well. They just based a set around it. Uh, it, Like, bottom 20, maybe. But honestly, I think the Islanders' original edge set was worse than that. Good point. Good point. Brendan, Steve, TC, thoughts on the Fisherman jersey? TC? I love the Fisherman. I think bottom 10 is very harsh, considering most of my bottom 10 is reserved for Buffalo's uniform history. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it's been making a huge comeback as like a retro jersey. and I, For the era it was in, It was perfect. Like the 90s, if you were going to have that uniform come out in any decade, it was the 90s. The decade of insane uniforms. It was better than some of the other out there jerseys we saw, like the Burger King. Um, My biggest problem with it is the lopsided name and numbers. That's a little obnoxious. But other than that, like I, I thought it was good enough that I actually bought a Fisherman two days ago. So I, I think it's a good-looking jersey. That may be the find of the year, your fisherman jersey there. Steve, oh, yeah. Steve or Brendan, you guys got uh, anything nice to say about the fisherman jersey, or is it all negative? <laughs> oh, I got nostalgia. Let's go down memory lane here. There we go. All right. I actually, when I first got into hockey jerseys, it was actually with a video game, NHL 97, and they still used the Fisherman logo for the Islanders on that. And they still mm-hmm. used those jerseys. And that was the coolest thing in my mind. So using those, I, they're just so completely 90s. And being a kid who grew up in the 90s and enjoyed it all, it has a, you know, a soft spot in my heart. But if they were to try and do it today... They'd just be mercilessly mocked. I like uh, hold sh- your hold your horses right there for a second. <laughs> they might. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, fishermen merchandise coming out, and you mentioned the or we mentioned on the blog. I'm not sure ex- who exactly posted it. The group sales jersey that they're giving out. Are you going in for that, Phil? Season. Yeah. Could could you work on that for all of us? <laughs> like so. 
Um, if you buy like a group package of 10 or more tickets, everyone for a certain number of games, I think it is, uh, you all get a fisherman jersey. Completely sublimated. It completely sublimated, but still, they they completely sublimated the Clark Gillies jersey they had last year for that same thing. But now that they're introducing a lot more fishermen stuff, I would not be surprised if the Islanders introduce a fisherman alternate jersey next year. It'd be interesting. Personally, I think the fisherman is a perfect logo now that the ice at Barclays is melting and they all leave looking like fishermen. <laughs> and they're going uh, yeah. to Belmont soon. Don't worry. <laughs> really? How is that deal going? Uh not New, York's, well. New York State's drag New York State's dragging their feet a little bit, but at the same time they are the front runners to land it. Brendan, thoughts on the fisherman jersey? I would really say that the main reason that it was probably hated is just because it was change. Not necessarily because it was bad. I mean, well, I'll get this out of the way. It's not good. It's not like amazing, but it it's a, it's a lot more hated than I think most of us really uh really think it should be. And I think that out of any possible team that could have adopted Teal in the 90s, aside from San Jose, New York was the team that it would work with. The Islanders, not the Rangers. <laughs> but that would be sure interesting to see on a Rangers concept, Teal. <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> but, uh, blasphemy, but interesting. You can't deny that it would be interesting. But if any NHL team today, again, aside from San Jose, was to try out, try out Teal again, it would be the Islanders. And uh, seeing a fisherman alternate, Maybe with straightened out striping, maybe just for a more traditional look, would be actually pretty cool to see. I think. And uh, well, let's stick with you, Brendan, and let's switch over to the early two thousands orange alternate. What are your thoughts on that jersey? Did you like it or not a fan? I mean, I like the fact that they have an orange jersey. That it was an orange jersey. I like, as some of you guys may have known from my blog post whenever I was still a writer. I love color on hockey jerseys because with white ice and a, if you have a just pretty much completely black or colorless jersey, that's boring. If you have some color, then it look then it the games look a lot better. So having a bright orange colored jersey was great, but I don't know why they chose that striping pattern. Especially why do they have arrows pointing at the players' crotches? I don't understand that. <laughs> because that's where the party's at. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. To the game. That, those jerseys were truly meant for after the game, yeah. <laughs> just about to yeah. say that. Go, go over to like the Garden City Hotel or something after the game. Team just rolls into the bar all wearing orange. Where's that, ladies? Right down here. That's where it's at. <laughs> Steve, thoughts on the orange jersey? Fan? Not a fan? You know, I never really was a fan of them just because of that weird striping <sighs> that goes on the front because... Like, if you look at it flat, it looks okay, but then you look at it, like, on a rounded scale, it's just weird how it looks. I mean, on the arms, it's perfectly fine, but on the body, it's so strange, and, like, it, it's one of those things, like, where is that coming from? But, I mean, compared to the fishermen, I mean, if you were to say which one would be a better jersey hold on hold, 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 hold your result for the end hold yeah. it. we'll go through the results at the end but, ah man i don't wanna <laughs> as far as far as it, in um, due time padawan it does as it's what, told or else it gets the hose again <laughs> for me it would be um i was actually never a fan of the font on the back of the orange islanders alternates i just thought it was really? too too slim yeah it's too really weak. thin it, it was an effort to be different while still using kind of a blocky sports lettering and it just it didn't work for me tc thoughts on the uh, orange alternate i mean i i was never necessarily a fan of it um it, i think the big problem for me is like the guy said the jagged striping it really to me just contrasts too much to such a smooth rounded logo to have such jagged striping on it that it just doesn't really look aesthetically pleasing to me. It may work, not that the NY logo was made at the time, but if you go back, it may have worked with the NY logo or would have been a little more acceptable considering your point there, TC. Sean, thoughts on the orange alternate jersey? I've been looking at it for a good solid minute and I'm trying to figure out if the 
side panel things are a continuation of the arm or something that when you because if you fold the arms in on themselves the uh the cuffs connect to them and at the time that was a pretty common design trend with jerseys was to try and connect the stuff on the arms to the sides of the jerseys the capitals did it for example i i'm nostalgic for it in a sense and i agree the fact that the islanders actually tried an orange jersey what infuriates me about it is how small the primary logo is actually on it when you get it up close. The remakes have seemed to have fixed that, but the originals had a very small primary logo. And for, for especially for the Islanders, that really hurt the design. And let's finish things off with Phil. Phil, your thoughts on your team's orange jersey. Uh, best alternate in team history, bar none, uh, first, first of all. But then again, they also have had a lot of bad alternate jerseys so that doesn't really say, say the, that much the 2011 that, yeah, the islanders the bar isn't set really high for a good old exactly jersey. no <laughs> um and i'm looking at a picture of aaron asham wearing one right now um and you know what those jacket side panels fit with the whole theme of the jersey because the idea of the jersey is to be bold which is why they chose orange as their base color so why not go all out without going too crazy um now this is kind of a point that i forgot to mention but aside from being bold i don't really understand what the design has to do with the islanders in any sort of it's event. not supposed to have anything to do with the islanders at all it's supposed to be different without being stupid like the fisherman was at the time um and fun fact they were actually supposed to have matching socks i was su- i would assume they would be like an orange and blue half and half socks separated by one white thin white stripe but they were never released and so they went with the traditional navy socks never happened okay all right and phil if you have to pick a winner the fisherman jersey versus the orange jersey who do you got in terms of better jersey or jersey i love more that's the question because those are two different answers so it's your personal preference so what jersey do you love more <sighs> choose, I love choose the a child jersey more. i i like I'm biased, but I love the fisherman jersey more. But that being said, I think the orange jersey is a better jersey. Okay, all right. It, if I was choosing, I would choose the fisherman jersey just because uh, it would be something I want in my collection. And the orange jersey, I just have no desire to have whatsoever. I don't. Think right. it's a, I don't think it's a well, solid. I ha- jersey. And I have both jerseys in my collection. One of them signed by uh, Brian Trottier, the uh, orange jersey, but. Look at Phil dropping names. Way to go, Phil. Cool. <laughs> the sad part is that it's a Rick DiPietro jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you got that one for another 15 Sick. years. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> got it at a garage sale for 20 bucks. Best money I ever spent. It was Rick DiPietro's garage sale, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it wasn't actually. Yeah. Sean, oh, Fisherman versus um, the Orange. You know what? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have the unpopular opinion. I'm going to say the orange jersey because at this point, the fisherman jersey is so well known, and everybody knows, and everybody wants in their collection, and it's all high priority. That orange jersey doesn't get a lot of love, and it, Phil brought it up at the time of all the sort of avant-garde alternates that were tried in leading up to the Edge era. The Islanders did have one of the better ones. TC, your choice. Call me a gay fish because I love fish sticks. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> Jesus. I love the fisherman jersey. I think it's the perfect 90s jersey and it has a great amount of nostalgia. Like you and Steve, I am a 90s kid and it just speaks to the child in me. Oh, God. <laughs> I just <laughs> I killed the boss. <laughs> I'm not dead. Sorry about that. <laughs> not dead yet. <laughs> PC beat the final boss level on a on HJC video game. <laughs> oh god. HJC podcast. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll cut out the part of me dying. Uh, let's go with Steve. No, your your choice here. I honestly have to go with the fisherman. The orange one just it doesn't stand out as much as the fisherman does in my opinion so all right and brendan your choice 
I think I disagree with Steve on the fact that the orange doesn't stand out because it's a bright orange, and I like the bright orange, but I'm going to have to give it to the Fisher, the Fisherman jersey because I just think it works better as a hockey jersey. I, even though the stripes are wavy, they're still hem stripes rather than uh, arrows pointing at their crotch. <laughs> Ain't right. no party like an orange jersey party. Because <laughs> orange. To my crotch. <laughs> okay, it just cut out and then it just ends up with my crotch. I'm like, what? TC has the best microphone. It's going into business for Clearly. itself. It's funny. I don't. Whenever we talk, like in the few minutes before the podcast starts, I don't think I ever hear a cut out. No, no. I heard a cut out a few times. That's why it has a mind of its own. It just waits for the perfect yeah. moment, and he's going to mention crotch here. I'm going to cut out. <laughs> And so it's going to have a lot of editing to do tonight. <laughs> the winner of our first uh, throwback throwdown, the New York Islanders fisherman jersey by a score of five to one. That one being Sean, the only guy who likes the orange jersey. Good, good for you, Sean, for not going with peer pressure. <laughs> All right, guys. At this time, we're going to go around the league. I'll start us off. It's just a little 15, 20 second blurb about your team. We got a couple Penguins fans because we have way too many Penguins fans who write for the blog. So you guys are going to have Steve, Brendan, you guys are going to have well, to. Well, one of them uh, doesn't write anymore. Right. Friend of the show. Forgot about that. So Thanks, he, Phil. He can, he can come. I remember, uh, I remember from a uh, previous podcast, assisting contributor guy. <laughs> Just a contributor guy. Downgraded to friend of the show now. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'll start us off with the... Uh, friend is kind of strong. Can he be an acquaintance of the show? <laughs> At least he's not getting a pay cut for this. <laughs> I told you guys, no mentioning pay on the podcast. Come on. <laughs> All right, I'll start it off with the Maple Leafs. Uh, the Maple Leafs continue not to play defense as a team. And they refuse to learn, So, but they're still managing to scrape together wins. Uh, they've won three in a row as of this recording, uh, but they still don't seem to learn to play defense, and I don't know if the group that they have can be taught. So eventually, at some point, changes need to be made. Sean, Winnipeg. Winnipeg is currently losing 2-1 to one to the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights are desperate for a win right now. The Jets haven't lost since the last HJC podcast. So you know what? I'm okay if they lose this one. Hopefully they can get it to overtime, get that point. They're on a little bit of a point streak. This is going quite well. Phil, how's it going with the Islanders? Um, Before tonight, I was like, okay, this preview is going to be great. The Islanders have been playing well. They lost a tough game at home to Edmonton where they got completely ice tilted by Cam Talbot. And then they go into Dallas and then on <laughs> five nothing. <laughs> To the Dallas Stars. Are you serious? And, Phil, if you just want to give us a five-second update on how it went for the uh, New York Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Nothing at Rest all? Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, TC, why don't you give us a Rangers update? The Rangers are currently rocking a five-game win streak headed to tonight's game against the Oilers. Uh, we'll see how they hold up against Talbot, who smeared the Islanders earlier in the week. Uh, Elaine Vigneault seems to be sitting pretty pretty comfortably, but I think he's still on the hot seat. If they lose three in a row, does he go right back onto the hot seat? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, we got two Pittsburgh fans here. So, Steve, why don't you start us off, and then, Beepo, you uh, fill in the gaps where you can. Penguins just lost to the Capitals, so that's a heartbreaker. I'm pretty sure they're going to enjoy that. Um, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic about the Penguins. They're still in second of the Metro, so that's good. Um, it's been a while since I've caught a game, so that's where I'm going to need Bebo to fill in. But they're still giving up a lot of goals. Did. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, they're like negative seventeen thanks to Niami. <laughs> so they've got a ways to go. Florida thanks them. Brendan, uh, your thoughts on the Penguins this past week? Well, admittedly, I'm a busy college student, so I don't have. I don't really. I'm not. I'm not always able to pay attention completely to every game. So I don't know how much far, how much better off I am than Steve. But uh, 
I mean, they're uh, still sitting comfortably in second in the Metro. So in a way, that's not a reason to worry. But at the same time, they seem to be slumping a bit, especially Crosby. He hasn't, he's been slumping a bit. But knowing the Penguins and Mike Sullivan, I'm sure they are. they have the potential to pull themselves right out of that slump. All right, good stuff. That was uh, the HJC Raiders go around the league yep, in a very time for the entertaining. Phoenix Coyotes update brought to you by. <laughs> oh, by the way, Jets three one. <laughs> in case anybody hasn't caught on, we record this podcast on a Friday evening. So, actually, in two minutes on the East Coast, it's going to be Saturday morning. Fantastic. Yep, it's already Saturday in Halifax. No one cares. Yeah, nobody. (laughs) (laughs) Can you Maritimers even read a clock? Wow. (laughs) No, yeah, it looks like this. (laughs) All right. Great, great mime for the audience who can't see us, there, Sean. Oh, the big hands up like this, there, by, and then you got the little hand just going there across like that, and all. Then you know, when the little hand gets down there, you know, pogey coming in, so you gotta go get your pogey check. (laughs) <laughs> beautiful beautiful <laughs> next week on trailer park boys <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect time to go to fake or authentic and uh soon Woo! enough we'll have some we'll have some theme music for this game because it's sticking around um fake or authentic you guys just give a quick answer on each statement whether you think it's fake or authentic Fake or authentic, every team should have an alternate jersey next season. Sean? Fake. New Jersey and Detroit should never have alternates. I think that's just a ground rule. Phil? Fake. New Jersey should have an alternate, first of all. And it should be black. Uh, but there are a couple teams that could do do without third jerseys right now. TC? Uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and say authentic. I think that it's a great way for some teams that may not have been able to get a better design, <coughs> Ottawa, oh, <laughs> to come out with a new one that they could transition into a primary set sometime soon. And it's also a great way for them to make cash off fans. Steve? Which, let's be honest, is the end game. Yeah, of course certainly. it is. <laughs> Fake or authentic, Steve? Fake. Not every team needs a third jersey. Um, Detroit, they don't need one. Uh, the Devils could go for one, honestly. Honestly, they could. I don't think the Avalanche need one. So uh, I'm just naming some off the top of my head. But no, not every team needs a third jersey. Brendan? Both. Fake in the sense that I don't really think every team needs an alternate, just like we've mentioned. There are some teams that it doesn't really make much sense for, like Detroit. But authentic in the fact that the more jerseys, the better, as long as they look good, of course. Nice job sitting on I'm the sure fence. we would. All, I'm sure we would all love seeing a whole bunch of designs come out over the summer. Yeah, of or, course. I guess early into the fall. Of course. I want to see Vegas in a steel gray. I think that, that could look sweet. good. But they already are. Yeah, what? <laughs> They're already wearing gray, dude. He means more all gray. gray. Yeah. More gray. <laughs> more, more gray. 2007, 2008 avalanche throwbacks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, no, Vegas Golden Knights coming out in stainless steel jerseys. <laughs> Rome. <laughs> Not, not, no, not even, not even actual just... night combat wear. <laughs> <laughs> An actual suit of armor. Yes. <laughs> their sticks are now swords. Yeah, maybe go. maybe put the Golden Knights in gold. Crazy idea there. Ah. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's... <laughs> Make sure it's that shiny gold they have on the arms right now. Yeah. The whole jersey. Piece. The whole jersey. <laughs> and make it really tight. <laughs> the poor fitting jersey. <laughs> All right, fake or authentic? Next question. We will see some new collar styles from Adidas next season. Brendan. Oh boy, I was hoping you didn't put me on the hot seat because I'm not entirely sure. Well, you I'd sat like on the fence it. for the last question, so no sitting on the fence for this Fair one. Enough. Well, I'm not really sure if it's counting sitting on the fence, but I would like to say yes because 
everybody hates the callers for the most part, or at least the treatment that most teams had gave them. But I'd also like to say fake because who knows if they're actually going to do it. People hated the Avalanche jerseys, the Senators jerseys, the Penguins jerseys before they switched for so long. And the Penguins only switched the year before they switched out of Reebok. The Senators really haven't yet. And the Avalanche only did this year. So who knows? Steve? Fake. Adidas put too much money into scrapping those collars. So they're they're here for at least, I say, four seasons. Phil? I'd say fake as well because of the amount of effort that Adidas has put into not just creating these collars, but just for every single team. They're not going to come out with a brand new design unless it improves the weight of the jersey, which I don't think is going to be anytime soon. TC? I'm going to say fake because I don't think Adidas has the self-awareness to know how badly they shit the bed with these collars. And Sean? Authentic, and it's going to be in a Winter Classic game. Good point. I like that point. All right, fake or authentic? The Bigfoot logo is a better shoulder patch than the Colorado C on the Avs jerseys right now. Sean, fake or authentic? Authentic up until 2003. After that, I have to say that the Bigfoot uh, logo lost all its magic after the Avalanche went and you know got rid of all their classic players and brought in Brandon Yip. <laughs> Phil? Authentic. Because the, the C patch... Right now has an awkward shade of navy blue that fits absolutely nowhere in the Colorado Avalanche color scheme. If he made it black, I could see it, but right now, no. TC, uh, I'm gonna have to go with authentic. I love the Bigfoot logo, and while I do appreciate the C logo tying into the state of Colorado and the history of hockey in Colorado, I think the Avs. Uh, Yeti foot worked great, especially when they add Howler. Hashtag bring back Howler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Steve, fake or authentic on this one? This is authentic, no doubt. If they come back with a classic design, how could you not bring back the foot? I mean, it, in just like Phil said, that Colorado Sea has that weird navy color that just it's out there. Like, if they changed it up, it could be better, but it still wouldn't surpass the foot. And Brendan? I'm on the fence again, but I'm leaning, I'm going to say authentic, because <sighs> the Yeti foot is a lot more unique than the C is. Is that but... fence starting to hurt yet? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the, uh, the Yeti foot is a lot more unique than the C is, but I think the Yeti foot looks a little bit dated. So I wonder if there would be a way to kind of use them both and bridge the gap. I'm not sure. And I also think that I, they should change the Navy in the sea to black or change the black everywhere else to Navy. I think ideally, I think ideally the uh, avalanche would look better in Navy than black, but they have a lot of history with the black. So I'm not really sure that would work in real life. Okay. But back to the logos. Again, on the fence, but I'm, I'm leaning more towards authentic. And the fence thanks you for sitting on it. <laughs> Do we need to get you a rubber donut? <laughs> <laughs> Can All I have right. a real donut? <laughs> if you make up your mind instead of saying you're on the fence, maybe. <laughs> One side of the fence has jelly donuts. The other side is chocolate donuts. Well, H2C podcast, Brandon takes a stand. <laughs> It's just 20 minutes of him going, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Faker authentic. I'm interested to see what Chicago does with another outdoor game jersey. Sean. Authentic. How much farther do they have to throw back? It's like they have the 1920s jerseys, and then what? Like, what are they going to do? They're going to come up with their current jerseys with, with a tan outline around the logo, and that's going to be the change this time. <laughs> Phil, I mean, it, it's it's enough with the outdoor games, please. Just enough. 
Like, I get hosting it in a historic venue like Notre Dame, even though I absolutely despise Notre Dame as a university in general. But enough. TC? Uh, I'm going to have to go with fake because I'm pretty sick and tired of seeing Chicago sort of half-ass their way when it comes to outdoor games. They just kind of stick with a generic ripoff of something they've worn in the past, nothing that's really exciting or new, and then just use that. Steve? Fake. Like Sean said, like how much more throwback could they do? They've gotten to the point to where they're literally recycling things. So, and just, you have to think, the players that have been there for so long, they're probably like, another outdoor game? Oh, for Christ's sakes. And let's go live outside to the fence. Brendan. Uh, I think I'm on the fence again. No, I'm kidding. This time, I, I'm taking a stand. I'm, I'm, I'm authentic on this one because the wording of the question is that I'm interested to see what they do. And I'm interested to see if they, again, just cop out and change their current design a little bit just to make it look a little bit more historical and go with that, or if they actually bring back something new, like I think it was the early 1920s, plain black and white, something like that, for example. So I'm interested to see which route they go. I'm I'm sure they might, but I'm really interested to see which route they actually go. No, they'll throw back to the 2014 Stadium Series game. (laughs) (laughs) The 2014 Stadium Series game. And then they'll throw back to the 2016 game when they get the 2020 Winter Classic and wear (laughs) black versions. that, And then wear a red version of that in 2022 when they host the Stadium Series. The options are endless. You mean 21. But, sorry, 20, no, 2021, they get to host the 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 Centennial Classic 3 or 4. <laughs> Centennial Classic. They'll start like, up, like WrestleManias. And then yeah. with that, they'll throw back to the Edge jerseys. <laughs> and then in 2028, when they host the uh, Winter Centennial Classic. The Winter, or no, Centennial the winter, the winter uh, Decadio Classic. What, uh, what? I don't know if there's a word. Winter for, uh, Centennial Stadium Centennial Classic. <laughs> <laughs> They'll the just create. Winter Centennial <laughs> Series. Brought to you by <laughs> Bridge Show by Fours. <laughs> They'll just end up coming up with a game, the Blackhawks Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten That's of them every year. That's basically what this thing when is the, now. When the Florida Panthers play the, you know, in the historic rivalry of Florida versus Chicago. <laughs> And Those are good games. Fuck! Not <laughs> another <laughs> outdoor game in Chicago. <laughs> and, then, and then the next year, Vegas and Chicago. <laughs> another uh, historic rivalry. They'll do an outdoor game where they play in the Chicago Wolves arena. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, that was an episode of Fake or Authentic that kind of got off the rails, but it was still fantastic. Uh, let's... Know, that's why it's fantastic. <laughs> Isn't that what half the podcast is getting off the rail? <laughs> that's the beautiful part of it. Let's go it to the. the more than the Chicago Express. <laughs> My favorite part of podcasts is throwing in things that I know Ryan has to edit later in the night. Unless, <laughs> unless he gets really lazy. It's really lazy. Next, and, then, the next, yeah, and then my parents younger, hear me say, Our younger fuck, readers can't care. listen to this because we said shit. <laughs> Fuck balls, cock, shit, cunt. The, the next Chicago ah, ah, It's time now for the HJC mailbag. 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 We go to the HJC mailbag, and uh, in case you didn't notice, on the blog now on the right side, down near the bottom, there's a great spot for you guys to leave your questions. Let's go to the questions now, and we'll go to uh, Noah B., and he said... Do you think the NHL should start using white jerseys at home? Sean? No. I, I'm too used to the... I, I get why people of a certain age who grew up with this, I was just old enough to remember when they switched. I, I get why people of a certain age like, well, it, it was like your team always wore white, but then you got a new color every time a team came. You know, if Dallas came to town, it was green. Detroit comes, it's red, et cetera, et cetera. Versus with the white jersey on the road, every team you face is going to be wearing white. On the other hand, I mean, why do that? Phil, what are your thoughts on white jerseys at home? My thought is that they should adopt what the NBA is starting to do, where the home team has a choice of what jersey they want to wear at home, and then the the away team would 
have to find something that clashed. Unfortunately, <laughs> obviously, with uh, hockey, there's a lot more equipment involved because you also have to have the, the helmets, you have to have the socks, the jersey itself, and in the case of Vegas, white different gloves. Um, but all in all, if you can't do that, dark's at home. Let the other team look boring and, and, and plain and white and rep your colors at home. Plus, also, a majority of the alternate jerseys that came out once things got started with that were colored. They were not white. And you wanted to wear those at home, then the other team has to wear white on the road. TC, what are your thoughts on white jerseys at home and maybe something, something that hasn't been said by Sean or Phil? I do respect that some people see it in like a historic aspect, but I'm going to go ahead and base this purely on the fans. I think it's much more intimidating for, say, uh, Tampa Bay to go into Detroit and instead of having to face a crowd full of white jerseys to go in and see that sea of red around. So I think to a certain extent it can play into home ice advantage to keep the colored jerseys. I think the sea of red is a Calgary thing, TC, not Detroit. I mean, have they copyrighted it? It's still red. With the letter, like with the letter C. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. They do actually use the phrase sea of red all the time. I, sure I was that, that was a joke. S E A. I know. I, it was a joke, TC. Uh, TC is going to jump uh. through his computer and punch <laughs> He's going to jump through his computer right and murder you. Yes. Guys, no more cheap <laughs> vaping on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thoughts on whites at home, white jerseys, white jerseys at home. See, I'm I'm kind of on the fence because you also have that option of you see a lot of the juniors. <laughs> Be See, that's my job. I, I am just kidding on the on the fence thing. No, I <laughs> I like the at home color. Although I've always wondered how it would be if you did that like half season swap that the Canadian that the Canadian leagues and the junior leagues do and the AHL too. Mm-hmm. So I I just don't know how that would work though, but like that could be an alternative. But I really think it should be up to the teams what they want to wear. Fence boy, what do you think about whites at home? I have three points, and then I'm not really gonna say it's on the fence. If we're gonna say it's either white or dark, nothing else. I say dark at home because rep your team's color. If I can, if I could do whatever I wanted to do. I would have a primary and clash system, kind of like what the NBA is doing, because like I've mentioned before, I love seeing color. So whenever you can have color on color, why not do it? And Or soccer. To, yeah. Or to uh, go back to uh, my, my usual state of being on the fence, <laughs> why not do the half and half, uh, half season white, or half season white and half season dark like the other leagues do? Way to sit on that fence. So. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Next right. podcast I'm on, you'll just see instead of my uh, squeaky chair, you'll see a fence below me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have you on, and you can present both sides of every argument. <laughs> All right, uh, this one comes. This question comes from someone named Billy. What is your unpopular opinion when it comes to jersey designs? Let's start with you, Brendan. I have a lot of them, but go with I one. No, I'm trying to think of one. <laughs> What do you like that no one else likes? I wouldn't likes? really say color is one. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Fuck color. I got one. Okay, go I'll, ahead. I'll pass until I can think of another one. And there you go. Good timing, Steve. <laughs> go ahead, Steve. I like phantom yokes. Phantom yeah. yokes. That's unpopular. That is unpopular. What? They can work. They're horrible. <laughs> We haven't they seen them. I'm not going to your wedding anymore. That, that <laughs> you never gave there, me your address it's... for the invite. So. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. I never got it. If you want to go to Steve's okay. wedding, email your address to concepts at hockeyjerseyconcepts.com, <laughs> and I'll be sure to forward it to Steve. Five dollar donation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, I'm already getting a shitty toaster from TC. So. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? That is going to press the Pens logo into every slice of toast you eat. You will taste greatness with every bite. <laughs> you can't afford 14 you're, you're bucks. You're going to the ones that you can only see like three quarters of the ice. I'm already paying for Red Bull season tickets. <laughs> I don't know how much you're paying for those? 350 for the season. Jeez. That's to go by bad. yourself? 314 for what? Red 
for uh, River Hounds. Cool. So uh, I don't know if y'all are aware, but this is a hockey podcast. <laughs> we can edit this out. <laughs> Thank you guys for making so much work for me. That's awesome. Uh, TC, you're so, unpopular. Uh, guys, what, did you, what did you guys think about the field hockey game the other day? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but the sled hockey match the other night. I hate all of you. I really do. Go, go ahead, TC. Unpopular opinions. Go. Uh, my unpopular opinion, I am actually a huge fan of when you can put striping in the yoke. And Phil? I know a lot of... Is, that, is it that unpopular? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say that's unpopular. Uh, I, I'm doing unpopular not in the sense of like people dislike it, but in the sense of not enough teams are doing it. Fair. Okay. Phil, your unpopular opinion on jer- or your favorite unpopular thing about jerseys? Un- unpopular opinion about jersey design is that the Montreal Canadiens white sweater is absolute garbage. Agreed. Well, you're biased because you're a Leafs fan. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to have to go ahead and say I agree, too. Just the Montreal Canadiens in general are dog shit, so we don't even need to talk well, about them. We get, we look at their on ice play right now, but... And just their whole demeanor and way about they the way they go about things, yeah. All right, here we go. And they're <laughs> French. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, Sean, why don't you jump in here and uh, straighten the right in the ship here? What's your unpopular? All right, where to begin? All right, um, some of the Reebok Edge cookie cutter jerseys look pretty good, i.e., Philly, Atlanta's away. Um, the Black Islanders alternate. The first one is the best alternate they've ever had. I love the Buffa Slug. I love the Atlanta Thrashers. Every jersey that they ever wore, including the motocross jersey, the Bolt alternate was not that bad. I'm Which gonna have Bolt to jump in on because the uh, Thrashers train with Jets here. Which Bolt alternate are we referring to? Both. The Storm? Yes. I don't know. Really no, 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 no. The actual Bolt script. Oh, and to top it all off, the best jersey the Leafs ever wore had the TML shoulder patch on it, and the best numbers they ever wore were the rounded ones. Oh, look at that. Sean just cut out, and he's out of the podcast. What happened? <laughs> we're going to go uh, to an anonymous question for our next mailbag question. Why? Oh, put your name on uh, it. Do I, uh, do I not get to uh, give my unpopular opinion now that I've thought of it? You're not even a writer. <laughs> <laughs> The fence is actually quite comfortable, guys. The weird thing is, Brendan, is I completely forgot about you and just carried on with the podcast. But go ahead, boy. That's fair. I was originally going to say that I don't mind the Orca logo. Now, I don't think it's their best, I don't, but I don't mind it. But Phil and uh, TC gave me a pretty good jumping off point. I, My personal opinion is that the Montreal Canadiens road jerseys are better than their home jerseys. I will now, Whenever I say better, I don't really mean more iconic. The home jerseys are more iconic by far, but especially owning one of the road jerseys, I think that for a white jersey, it's just the plainness of it doesn't really hurt it. I think it makes it a lot more sharp and clean whenever you have the plain white with red on the yoke and red cuffs, but not much else to it. It's not too plain, maybe unless you don't have TV numbers, but it's not too much either. Congratulations. The one opinion you've given is garbage. <laughs> I, I'm still going to fight you. <laughs> A lot of discontent bubbling up to the surface here with the HJC writers and friends of the show. Uh, Seriously. This question came in on November 6th. There was no name left with it. But the question says, why is Jet so obsessed with blacks for black's sake? So Jets, <laughs> Sean, why don't you answer? Why are you so obsessed with black for black's sake? Well, thank you, TC, for that wonderful question. Hey, we don't know that. No (laughs) name was left. Well, all right. Um, Why do I like black jersey? So I don't like every black jersey. I think the Anaheim Road or the Anaheim Script alternate is one of the worst jerseys in NHL history. Uh, I didn't really like when Columbus tried it. Other than that, I can't. I don't know. It's just. It's funny. White's a completely neutral color for you to go off of if you want to make an alternate to base color. But black, oh, heaven forbid you throw a little black on your jerseys. You know, I mean, I, not every team should do it. But 
I, I don't even know. I could name like like three teams that shouldn't do it. And it's Toronto, Montreal, and Detroit. But all the other twenty eight teams are good to go. Yeah, honestly, that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for I, not sitting I would on the fence. Definitely add to that list. Yeah, you'd add the Rangers. Okay, four there. Panthers. No. They can have a black jersey. They can have a black jersey. Midnight Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> See, Brendan, that's how you don't sit on the fence right there. Take some notes. <laughs> Whenever I didn't sit on the fence, you guys yelled at me. <laughs> that's the point <laughs> of this whole thing. Go back to your so fence, boys. So <laughs> oh, now, now he's got the jersey, the Habs jersey on. You didn't notice that? <laughs> no, because I, I have the little window going here, and I have my browsers going up here so I can have the notes and stuff. Oh. There is one more question left on November 8th from Anonymous. And his question was, can you answer my question? No. No, we cannot. Thank you. No. no. All right. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> that is a real question. <laughs> that count as an answer, though? 518 on November 8th no. from Anonymous. Can you answer my question? No, we cannot. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we had a question almost as stupid as that when, uh, <laughs> when we did a podcast a while back. Yeah, we get a lot of stupid questions. Hey, but man, a, we love your no questions. Stupid questions, just stupid people asking questions. That's this is true. Um, I'll, That's I'll, 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 I'll field this one. You probably left a question on a comment on a post a while ago. Just include that question in the bar and then, you know, say, can you answer my question? And then put the question after it. Don't just say, can you answer my question? When we don't have a question to answer, we answer that question. And the answer is, yes, we can, because we just did. It's very important to have a real question for the HJC. Now, either day. that or this was just some troll that, you know, you're explaining this all of the time. Of course people. it is. It's a troll. <laughs> it, was, it was probably. I mean, that's the first thing I thought of, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's obvious. That's yeah, a disgruntled. Okay, okay, so th- that question was from Phil. No, it wasn't. I did not write that question. <laughs> All right. Well, that that was good stuff. Uh, this seems like a good point to wrap it up here today. Uh, Steve, why don't you give us 10 seconds? Uh, sell your shirts. Let everybody know uh, what we got up there and uh, how uh, awesome they are. I already bought one. Yes. Thank you, Phil. He bought the fish sticks. Uh, ones that are coming up is the boring Montreal Canadiens red, the <laughs> Avs 90s maroon jersey, St. Louis's 90s blue jersey with the red hem. We also have the Canucks 1982 large V Flying yellow v. jersey. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Yep, there you go. Then we That's also glorious. have Toronto's current jersey. And for the limited edition shirt, we have the 2016 Stadium Series Blackhawks. Excellent stuff. So make sure to get uh, your HJC Jersey Casual shirts on the blog. Go near the top. Uh, there's a tab that says shop. You can get them there. You can and also the get... price was lowered. Excellent point. The price time, was... And uh, at this time of the year in 2028, you can find the uh, Winter Centennial Heritage Classic uh Chicago Blackhawks jersey as a jersey casual shirt. We have jerseys that aren't even made yet. <laughs> so be sure to get your jersey casual shirts, everyone. Also f- available for sale are HJC stickers. These things are only $2 Canadian. So go find a toonie or two $1 bills, get them together, or find someone who will use their PayPal or credit card account to buy you a two dollar sticker. If you're American, we're talking that's only a buck seventy something, buck sixty something. So get your stickers. One fifty eight as of today. A buck fifty eight and free shipping. So, but will they go on my boat? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can try. Don't go to Whataburger. <laughs> don't go to Dunkin' Donuts, you silly Americans. You best be going on to the HJC eBay and buying yourself these lucky Canadian made their stickers then buy. Good good point. Hey guys, will, nice they get, will they go on my fence? You can, you can <laughs> put them on your fence. This <laughs> fence. Well, no, here's the thing. They will go on your fence. It will be on one side of the fence. <laughs> On one side, you have to buy two for it to go on both sides. No, you have to go to that side and look at the sticker and then give your opinion. I can see Beepo on eBay right now. Like, 
I could get one, but then the other side of the fence will be blank. I better get two. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make it fair? You, you have a leaky pipe? HJC stickers are great. <laughs> Throw them on there. Hey, HJC did the plumbing. No, I just love the website. It's fantastic. <laughs> Is your boat currently sinking? Use our stickers to plug the hole. <laughs> So many uses. This is fantastic. This we turn the screen door into the bottom of a boat with these stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck flex tape. HJC stickers are <laughs> Get them now. $2 Canadian. Shop shop HJC tab at the top of the uh, at the top of the screen. US. 158 US. For those that is... of you who use freedom money. <laughs> you <mean> real money? <laughs> Or you can use the fantastically colorful Canadian money. Actually, we won't yeah, even get into the bills. You need the two-tone toonie. It's got the polar bear in the middle. Gold <laughs> on the inside, silver on the outside. And even that won't work. You need a, a you credit. pop the middle out. If you're, yeah, and break the law. Absolutely. Go ahead. Pop the middle out of your coins and break the law. <laughs> Sean said so. Not HJC. Just, Sean. Do what, just do what I did and find one with the middle popped out already. Sure, he found it. He found it. <laughs> All right, guys. That's the shirts and stickers. We want to make sure you guys buy them. Uh, also, uh, if you're listening on the YouTube channel, uh, be sure to hit subscribe, and then you'll know when these go up ahead of time before Saturday at 430. And uh, also, if you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs, thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Uh, you can also leave some comments both on the blog and on the YouTube page, if you want to get involved in our chat at any point or let us know how we're doing. Uh, everyone, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again next week.